Today's show, we look into how fashion design is giving back to the community one stitch at a time. And we also look into a plane crash and what it means for the Rock Hill community. And finally, we look into one team that is adjusting to new changes on the mat. These stories and more on this edition of Hilltop News. What's rockin' Rock Nation, and welcome back to another episode of Hilltop News. Live from Studio 1060, I'm Brain Serenowitz. And I'm Yerm Ramirez. We have a great show in store for y'all today, but first, Yerm is going to catch you up on everything going on around the hill. Yerm? Thank you, Brayden. It is the third day of the 12 days of Holiday Cheer Spirit Days, with the theme being Winter Onesies. Tomorrow's theme is Christmas in July. Wednesdays is Family Picture Day. Thursdays is Fall Lala Days. And Friday is Winter Wonderland. For more information on these dress-up days, check out Blue Hawk Stucco on Instagram. Holidays on the Hill are a special time and busy time for all fine art organizations. Check out the schedule on your screen. Choir, orchestra, and rockets all have concerts or performances this week at 6.30 in the auditorium. Plus, the All Districts Art Show and Craft Fair will be on campus this Saturday from 9 in the morning until 5 p.m. Student Council is hosting a holiday movie night Thursday night. The event will be in the cafeteria and they will be playing Good Luck Charlie, It's Christmas at 6 p.m. And finally, this Friday we'll be having off-campus senior lunch from 2.03 to 2.33. With the holiday season in full effect, Brian Tayus looks into an annual service project here on campus. In the season of giving, the Fashion Design Program is making ornaments to donate to a senior citizen center. This project not only serves as an opportunity for students to strengthen their hand sewing skills, but also a way to give back to their community. I feel like I'm really being very helpful and productive knowing that it's going to the elderly. And it makes me like want to put a little bit more extra care into my ornaments. I just really love to see my kids put some hard, their hard work into um, a project and then give it to someone else and you know it kind of embodies that whole spirit of giving that we should have this time of year. This community project is not only benefiting the elderly but also the students, making them want to extend this project outside of just the Senior Citizen Center. I'm really happy. Um, I wish, I think I'm actually going to make some for my grandparents as well just because again they don't get as much love as like when you're younger, so just showing people that you care and um, like they matter, that's like really important. At the end of this project, almost 100 handmade ornaments were donated. This helped fashion design continue to try and find ways on how to give back using their sewing skills. For Hilltop News, I'm Brian Tayus. Ms. Berliner informed us that she had passed her goal with having a total of 108 ornaments. Fashion Design hopes to be able to continue their unique tradition and to spread the holiday spirit. Back in January, Universal Executives revealed that they had bought land east of Dallas Door Tollway for a kids-themed amusement park and a 300-room hotel. And as of last Friday, we got their first renderings of the park and its expected opening date in 2026. The first dozen Tesla Cybertrucks have been successfully delivered to customers assembled in Tesla's new plant just outside of Austin, Texas. The truck is aimed at the most profitable part of the U.S. auto market. National inflation has cooled down and is set to hit the National Reserve's target with an estimated annual rate of 3% down from 3.7 a month ago and sharp decline from around 9% last year. As a result of this, gas prices have been at a steady decline and are beginning to settle. There have been multiple plane crashes in the DFW area in the past month, one taking place just minutes away from Rock Hill. I looked into whether or not the danger these recreational airports poses have been flying under the radar. Something unusual happened in McKinney. I was just terrified. An airplane went through the fence at Arrow County Airport T-31, going over the median and into a car heading eastbound on Virginia Parkway. Frisco ISD 8th grader Carson Raper witnessed and recorded the whole thing. They have like a bunch of these military planes flying by, and since it was November 11th, which is, you know, Veterans Day, it was fly those planes that were flying over, and I just wanted to film them. And it plowed through the fence, went over, went over the first road, ended up on the second, and that's where a car from there hit it, preventing it from going over here. The accident was caused by a failed landing due to malfunctioning equipment. 
he had a really powerful plane and one of the mechanisms failed. So that mechanism was basically the propeller usually spins a certain way to go forward, right? And then to stop really fast, it spins the opposite way to give resistance, right? Um, so that failed. He touched down too late. And since the mechanism was already failed, he panicked and he tried to stop anyway. And thus, he went right through that gate, um, obviously onto the street. With another crash happening last month in Plano, and several in the past few years, there are concerns that events like this will become more and more common as the airport goes from being surrounded by open fields to neighborhoods. Despite this, local residents say they are undeterred. I heard a big crash. <laughs> And my brother came into my room maybe five minutes later. He was like, hey, a plane just crashed in the street. So uh, we went down there and we just, we watched it. Truthfully, I don't think any residential areas are really at risk. Um, worst case scenario, they land on the golf course and trust me, you would, you would hear it coming. Like you can look up, see it, get out of the way. Um, I don't think it poses much risk. The passenger, pilot, and driver were all not seriously hurt during the crash, with only one person sustaining some minor injuries. For all drivers who come to school via Virginia Parkway, be sure to keep your heads up and aware for planes on the runway at Aero Airport. As the changing of the seasons has come to our sports here on Rock, at Rock Hill, Aiden Richmond is here to bring you all the Rock Hill sports. Aiden? Thank you, Brayden. Boys soccer is preparing for their season coming up, and I was able to catch up with head coach John Singleton to talk to him about the team's preparations for their scrimmage against Plano East this Friday. How would you how would you say like the scrimmages just really prepared the team for come district time? Because I know I feel like last year like it seemed kind of challenging, and I know losing some players like it's also it's just adding adding another level to that challenge. That's a great question, and you're absolutely right. It will be a big challenge for us. Um, one of the things that's the key to that for us is our mindset. Coming into this year right from the beginning, we made a decision as a program that we were not going to worry about who wasn't here, who we lost to Walnut Grove, what our numbers were, but instead we were going to take the mindset uh, that we're going to take every challenge in front of us as an opportunity uh, and push forward. This past week, boys basketball participated in the Louisville tournament where they played five games, starting with a 71-74 loss to Louisville, followed by a 73-54 win over Forney and a 72-63 win over Skyline. However, the boys would end, would end the tournament with two losses, 64-69 against St. Mark's and 60-62 versus Grand Prairie. This marked the team going 3-7 overall for the season so far. The guys are back in action Tuesday the 12th and Friday the 15th with both games away at Frisco Memorial and Panther Creek. Girls basketball participated in the Buda Hayes tournament last week. Around Thursday night, they started out with a 49-61 loss to Brandy's High, however beat Floresville 43-31 for the second game of the night. The girls came back Friday to finish their business, beating Crosby 36-26 and San Marcos 57-50 to bring their overall record for the season to 7-7. Seven seven. The wrestling team was at Rockwall High School last week for the, for the Rumble on the Rock, and with it being one of the toughest tournaments in the state, to Hayden Stein it didn't matter when she placed first, Lillian Jukes placing second, and Oyanka Sola Autogon placing third, and the girls team placing fifth overall, highlights the, highlights the talent of the young women here on the hill. And as wrestling starts its season strong, Samantha Mitchell looks into how the team looks different from previous years. The wrestling team has gained new additions to their team since last year. One of these additions is a new coach being introduced to the program. It's, uh, it's been a good adjustment coming from my previous school to here. I'm a little bit different style than what they're used to, uh, but the kids have definitely adjusted to that and they've done a really um, good job. Coach Poulet ensures each wrestler is set for success in and out of the wrestling season. Coming off a dislocated elbow, Zeke Kelly knows firsthand how he shows his support towards his wrestlers. That same day, as soon as I got back from the hospital, he came to my house personally to check up on me and see how I was. Um, he's been giving me time to rehab, um, letting me get treatment, not pressuring me to like keep wrestling, keep wrestling, keep wrestling. So. 
Leaving an impact with each individual he interacts with, Poulet has brought the wrestling family together in more ways than one. Builds athletes, builds character, builds work ethic, and anybody can come out and wrestle. I got several kids who, who uh, from middle school right now, from seventh grade all the way up to seniors, first year wrestlers to guys who've wrestled for several years. Um, they've all seemed to enjoy it, uh, enjoy the camaraderie with their fellow teammates, and just overall enjoying the experience of wrestling. As the season moves in, Poulet seeks to employ his values and build a community for growth. For Hilltop News, I'm Samantha Mitchell. Wrestling will be back in action on Wednesday here at the Hill for the guys at 6 p.m. and the girls take the mats at Louisville High School for the Texas Women's Classic on Friday and Saturday. Well, that's all we have for today's show. For Hilltop News, I'm Aiden Richmond. I'm Ian Ramirez. And I'm Brain Serenowitz. Keep rocking, Blue Hawks!